Hi folks, Todd here. We made a little journey today to Alamance, North Carolina, where the Battle of Alamance took place on May 16th, 1771. This is where Governor Tryon had taken his militia to meet the regulators on the battlefield. And uh, it was a costly battle for the regulator, regulators, pretty much. A lot of them were captured, killed, or hung um, just right off the battlefield itself. So we'll take a little tour, walk around, and uh, show you the sites of Alamance Battleground. And here is a nice little diagram of the battlefield itself where the forces met each other, the militia and the uh, regulators had met on the battlefield. So here you go here in New Garden Road. And then you also get Salisbury, which is south of Alamance. And so in, everything in blue, regulators, militias in red. The roads, of course, are here. And um, everything in green is the actual battlefield itself, which we're going to walk on to in just a moment. And here's the battlefield. So on May 14th, 1100 militia, which was Tryon's men, arrived here. So just a couple days before the battle. They were heavily armed, and they also had uh, cannons too with them. Now the regulators pretty much had only muskets. No heavy weapons at all. And there were 2,000 of them that arrived. So they basically were situated within these woods most of the time here. And you'll see the monuments here and here. But this was the battlefield. We'll also walk over here and check out one of the homesteader cap, uh, cabins over here. But yeah, most of the regulators were situated, they had their encampment in the woods, where Tryon pretty much was out here in his encampment waiting for them. Now, from what I understand, they did fire some volleys into the woods where they were hiding as well. And then they met them head on on this battlefield. So we'll walk over towards the wood line over here. It's a nice day. But if you're a fan of Outlander, you can definitely see the reenactment of the battle there as well. They did a real good job of showed you, you know, showing you what happened during the battle. So we'll walk over here and we'll check this monument out. And this is a statue of James Hunter who was actually the general of the uh, regulators. So as I said before, there were several regulators that were hung on the battlefield. And these are their, some of their names here. And uh, so it was a tragedy. I mean, it was just, uh, they were pretty much overwhelmed by the British in this battle, even though they outnumbered the British. They did not have the armament that the British had with them, the cannons, and just also a lot of these militia were well-trained soldiers. Now we're going to walk back into the woods here where the regulators were camped out. Nice little trail over here, nature trail. So we can just kind of see what it looked like. Not sure how sparse the trees were at that time or if they were like this. So we'll walk back in here and just check it out real quick. And see what we have and you do have some of like the a lot of the trees are marked you know, a lot of white ash back in here so they do uh, on the nature trail itself and where the encampment would have been they do have markings of the various uh, trees and the wildlife that live back in here a nice little fire pit here My wife and I are big Outlander fans, and uh, we're so happy that they cover a lot of the history of this area in the storyline. And uh, the author of the books, she's also a historian, so she must have <laughs> really loved uh, North Carolina. A lot of rich history here during the Revolution. And we'll, we won't go too far back in here. We definitely want to go across the street and see the cabin and some of the other 
locations of the battle. But yeah, this is where they probably would have uh, had their encampment back in these woods. It's also a lot of the Virginia pine back in here. It's a really nice day, so it's around 80 degrees today. Might, be, might get a little higher. So we won't go too far, like I said, but this is basically the nature trail that would have taken you back into the encampment. Let's see what we got here. There we go. Regulator moment. Some memoirs of the battle state that Tryon had a horse shot out from under him during the battle, but Tryon failed to mention this in his report during the battle. That's interesting. So, yeah, poor horse. One of the major casualty of war back then is the loss of your horse, which is not good. So, brought into something they weren't asking for. So every now and then you gotta look and find these little markers. Like I was saying, all down here, they'll show you the different uh, vegetation that is located back in the woods here. We'll walk down here a little bit. Another marker down here. Oh, okay, so this is known as Magnolia Tree Trail. Looks like it might be a creek, creek down this way, back in here. And yeah, we didn't want to go too far in the trail, but it looks like it goes on for a good while. And these are your regulator woods where the encampment would have been. So let's head back this way. So as we head back towards the main battlefield, I will post information where Alamance Battleground is located, and I'll also post some information, because I do reenactments here too, and I'll send you to that in the description box. You'll uh, have links there, so you can uh, see when those uh, events happen here, when they have the reenactment of the Battle of, Alam uh, of Alamance. So, we'll head on back over here. Nice day. And it's actually about 10 degrees cooler with this shading in the woods. <laughs> Conservation. We have the historic plaque here, Battle of Alamance. The militia under Royal Governor Tryon defeated the Regulators at this point, May 16th, 1771. And the Battle of Alamance monument was erected here. Alamance County citizens took the first steps to mark the site of the Battle of Alamance in 1879. On July 4th, Reverend D.A. Long delivered a speech here, urging area residents to form an association with the charge of erecting a monument. Less than a year later, on May 29th, 1880, the challenge came to fruition. Following the three-mile procession from the Alamance County Courthouse in Graham, a crowd of 3,000 to 4,000 viewed the unveiling of the marker. And there it is. I wanted to also uh, put some pictures from uh, Outlander, from the actual Battle of Alamance, how they depicted it into the uh, video itself. So check these out.
So we've made it to the visitor center. Right now, everything inside is very limited because of uh, what's going on with the COVID-19 situation. So we're in phase two. Hopefully we'll get back to phase, we'll get to phase three soon where they'll open up more of the uh, museums. So, but yeah, this is the, the museum here. You go inside and they have artifacts from the battle and tell you more history. They have a living history area too, a little visit, which is right around the corner from the building here. I'm gonna walk over here. They do have some uh, cannons situated over here that would have been uh, used during the battle. Here you go here. Here's one of the replicas here. The actual cannons the British would have brought in to face the regulators. And again, they show you more of the uh, outline area of what happened on this side of the highway and where they came in for the Battle of Alamance here. And again, the red forces are your British militia here of uh, General or of Governor Tryon. And then you have the regulators up there and their encampment where we walked into the woods right over here. So here the, here's the wood line or forest line here and their encampment was here. They would have come up or come down from the north and there's your monuments that we went to. And here we are here at the visitor center. Of course the uh, battle itself did uh, come over in this area from the main battlefield so there was activity on this side as well. And like I said they do have the reenactments that go on uh, during the year and I will uh, again I will post a link in the description so make sure you check that out I was talking to the young lady here um, she was in her period costume and everything she was telling me too that Diane the uh, <laughs> the author of the Outlander stories the books actually came here and they were her and her husband were traveling down 85 and they saw the signs for the Battle of Alamance and came here, checked it out, and of course she included that in the story and she did a lot of awesome research on it. So she actually did come here. They had a book signing here too a while back where people would pay to have dinner, have her sign anything. All the money that she had raised with the signing of the book and the dinner with her, she gave it all back to the museum, which was awesome that she did that. So this was another encampment area besides just the woods. Um, the regulators reportedly camped on the hilltop straight ahead. Participants indicated uh, they choose this location for strategic positioning on higher ground. Before the Battle of Alamance, these men had to choose between fulfilling their colonial militia obligations or siding with their fellow backcountry uh, dissenters because many of them had much military training at tri uh, with Tryon forces the determining factor in the two-hour battle was the governor's firepower which included eight cannons so here's the hilltop they would have also encamped on so it does make sense so you have this higher ground and you've got this area over here where the visitor center is so here's the soldier's dilemma. What do you think happened? Just ahead of you, during 2009-2010 Alamance Battleground Research Project, surveyors discovered a flintlock musket top jaw and musket tool within a foot of each other. This discovery may indicate that during the 1771 Battle of Alamance, a soldier experienced problems with his musket in this area and attempted to either replace or resharpen his flint. He could have been killed before it was able to correct the problem, or perhaps he simply decided to drop his weapon and flee. And those are the actual pictures of what they found. So evidently they're still finding artifacts. The rock here is known as Pew's Rock. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. According to legend, Regulator James Pugh, brother-in-law of Regulator Herman Husband, 
lay behind this rock while he fired on Tryon's troops. Tradition has also held since 1842 that James was taken prisoner and hanged in Hillsboro on June 19, 1771. However, in 2013, research indicated that James Pugh was alive as late as 1810 when he wrote his will. His brother Enoch, another regulator, probably died in 1771, and it is possible he was the Pugh who was actually hanged in Hillsboro. This is the John Allen House. Quaker John Allen constructed this lodge dwelling in circa 1780 in nearby Snow Camp. The state of North Carolina moved it here in 1966, restored it, and it opened it to the public in 1967 to illustrate the colonial life in the backcountry of North Carolina. Love the stone foundations here to keep it up off the ground in the front there. Love the stonework here. The timber work. Clay and mortar. Keep it insulated. And here's the garden over here. That you would have had a fence around it, of course, to keep uh, wildlife out of your garden the best you could. You also have your herbs, vegetables, things like that. And while you're at uh, the Alamance Battleground, you can also see some of the historians dressed in all their uh, regalia and their colonial outfits. And this is Drew. And Drew, what are you doing over there? All right, now I'm working on a pair of trousers. So uh, Governor Tryon has uh, eight cannons with him. And to man those cannons, he has picked out sailors from Wilmington to man the artillery. So what I've been working on is a sailor uh, uniform. Sailors don't really have uniforms when we think about right. military with uniforms. Uh, I apologize, I left the jacket uh, That's right. up in the visitor center. But these uh, heavy cotton canvas, or not cotton, uh, hemp canvas trousers are what we'll use. And so uh, sailors have what's called slop clothing. And it's just made quick and cheap and dirty out of tough materials. Right. Uh, so this hemp canvas is going to be tough, it's going to dry quickly, and we see that used for trousers, waistcoats, uh, petticoat breeches that are those uh, sort of baggy right. pants we see sailors wearing that just below the knees. Uh, typically sailors, uh, for their dress, would wear uh, navy blue breeches and then that, that shorter jacket. So would they have worn that all the way here? Inland? That's what we think. Is right. that they're not going to be issued, you know, a new set of clothing. Sure. They're going to wear what they've got. These hemp canvas trousers are going to be super durable. Uh, it's their own clothes, which is what everybody here was wearing. There were no red coats or anything like that. So. Right. Okay. Civilians fighting civilians. So after talking to Drew for a little bit too, um, where the cabin is here, and where he's at the little barn over here, the little shelter. Um, this here is actually where uh, Governor Tryon and the militia had their encampment, was on top of this hill here. And way over here on the opposite side is where all the, a lot of the regulators would have encamped as well. So, of course, the main battlefield I took you there earlier was across the road. And uh, the trees here, to me, probably would have been more dense for coverage and they may have not realized how close they were to each other at the time so um but yeah in the woods over there also regulators across the battlefield were encamped as well so again there were over 2,000 regulators and 1100 militia so and they had eight cannons the militia did so the uh, odds of for the regulators to win this battle we're pretty much against them. Well, I hope you enjoyed your visit with me at the Alamance Battleground, and maybe you'll learn a little history. I learned some some uh, history as well on what happened here, and went to each of the plaques, read the plaques. So make sure you do that when you're walking around. Check out all the historical information at these plaques. 
beautiful small park where this had happened. All around us in this area in Alamance County, there's actually a lot of history um, with the militia and the regulators and also during the actual Revolutionary War. So this was a catalyst to the Revolutionary War. This is one of the major uh, battles that happened that kind of kicked off everything besides, of course, the Boston Massacre and what happened in Boston. But uh, in the South, this was really a situation that escalated very quickly and led to the Revolutionary War. But uh, thanks for joining me on this little adventure. We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well. Subscribe, and I got some more stuff coming this way. We're going to do, hopefully, do Kings Mountain soon, another historic uh, Revolutionary War site where a major battle happened against uh, Major Ferguson, I believe, and uh, Cornwallis. So stay tuned for that. You guys take care, and be sure to subscribe. Bye-bye.